Welcome to a noob's guide to Menelaus. This is Menelaus, a ginger with a dad bod whose inability to keep his wife happy in bed led to the death of thousands in the Trojan War. A playable warlord in a Total War saga Troy, Menelaus was the second son of the ruling family of Mycenae. He and his brother Agamemnon were sent into exile as boys by a throne usurping uncle and his pack of hyena henchmen, so that they spent most of their early lives in neighboring Sparta. Menelaus fought and bled to retake that throne, but it was his brother Agamemnon who was crowned king in the end. Not that it bothered Menelaus, Agamemnon was always firstborn and first to make all the decisions for both of them. Their victory was entirely thanks to the neighboring king of Sparta, who gladly joined them on campaign, as his wife had just given birth to a daughter that the queen kept insisting was really the child of Zeus after she'd gotten freaky with a swan. The girl grew into the drop-dead gorgeous woman, Helen, whose beauty quickly turned into a liability for Sparta. Theseus, king of Athens and slayer of Minotaurs, once abducted her in a failed attempt at forced marriage, and now, at the age of 14, Helen wrestled naked in the arena, hunted with the boys, and practiced at war. She was even daring to have opinions. Her Spartan king stepfather felt it was time to make Helen someone else's problem. From the ancient to the prepubescent, any Aegean king or warlord still swinging a pair came to Sparta and presented themselves as a suitor, as marrying Helen also meant that they would have rights to become the next king of Sparta. On paper, Helen was the perfect match for the power-hungry king Agamemnon. She was a beautiful daughter of Zeus with a divine dowry attached. But when Agamemnon arrived to press his case, it wasn't for himself but for his brother, Menelaus, who hadn't even bothered to come along. Agamemnon passed on marrying Greece's most beautiful woman because Sparta's current king was still young and relatively healthy. His hairy lump of a brother, Menelaus, could play doting son-in-law for the next decade. Agamemnon had other plans, like marrying the Spartan king's other, less divine daughter, Clytemnestra, ensuring their two kingdoms were bound up tighter than a BDSM convention. But so many suitors had arrived that their smuggery and Musk threatened to smother Sparta. Turning any of them down was an insult and grounds for invasion and war. Luckily, Odysseus, king of Ithaca and self-proclaimed genius, was there to point out the obvious. Everyone present was forced to swear an oath on a haunch of butchered horse meat that no matter who Helen chose, the suitors would defend the marriage. She then chose Menelaus, which tells you something about him. Personality-wise, Menelaus was a natural position 5 hard support, who bent over backwards to please others. He wasn't especially handsome, polite, or adventurous, and was generally the human equivalent of vanilla ice cream, which made him an especially good husband and king-in-waiting, as well as a solid guy to have around, if a bit unexciting. Menelaus and Helen soon welcomed a daughter, Hermione the brightest witch of her age, and their lives were flowing along nicely until an ambassador from the distant city of Troy arrived at the gates. Enter Paris of Troy. The hard-partying Trojan prince wasn't there to just sign trade deals and do amphoric keg stands. After an especially high-stakes game of naked truth or dare, the goddess Aphrodite had promised Paris the most beautiful woman in the world as his wife. Paris and his abs were there to collect. When Menelaus went home to visit his sick mother for the weekend, he came back to a looted palace and the biggest cuckold in history award. Their elopement triggered Helen's marriage defense clause, so Menelaus brought off that dead horse and started beating it, going straight to his brother Agamemnon to raise the banners and assemble a heist crew unlike any other in history. And this is where Menelaus gets his call to arms game mechanic from, asking each of his sworn allies to lend warriors to the fight against Troy. It makes Menelaus the only lord in game with a global recruitment pool and gives him access to the unique units from every Greek roster. The only thing Menelaus can't recruit is an archer hero, as he gets all red in the face when anyone mentions grabbing their wood and shooting their loads for his wife. His other mechanic, Spartan Colonies, hits on one of the unspoken truths of the war. Mycenaean settlements sprang up all along the coast of Crete and Asia Minor in this period, and were beginning to seriously cramp Troy's dominance of trade in the Aegean. They're the reason Troy likely sent a diplomat to Sparta to begin with. 
These colonies let Menelaus gobble up the sloppy seconds of his allies while paying to settle any ruins they leave behind, letting you wage the entire war in your boxers back in Sparta if you so choose. But that's not Menelaus. He personally led his father-in-law's Spartan army to tear down the walls of Troy and get his wife back. As you would expect, the Spartans field a devastating army of heavy infantry, getting unique armor-piercing axes to hack their way across the battlefield. Menelaus himself is surprisingly an epic fighter class hero. His years of experience knocking heads on the front line has left him rocking a dad bod ripped straight from Brendan Gleeson in 2004's Troy. His special shield wall ability briefly reduces missile damage for everyone around him, and Divine Challenge forces other heroes to duel Menelaus in ritual combat. Because when Achilles refused to fight at Troy, Agamemnon wagered the outcome of the entire Trojan War on a duel between Paris and his brother. While he may not have Achilles' chiseled abs, Menelaus is more dangerous than he lets on. When the pampered Prince Paris presented his person outside the palisade, Menelaus beat the ever-living brakes off of him. Paris only survived because Aphrodite swooped down on a cloud to rescue his ass, and was so butthurt at getting ass-blasted by Bronze Age David Harbour, he paid his archers to shoot Menelaus. It's only after taking a gut shot that this beast agreed to stop taunting Paris and quit the field, saying that if he died, make sure to bury him face down so Paris could kiss his ass one last time. And this wasn't even Menelaus' Aristea moment, the moment a poet gives each hero to show off what a badass they are. For Menelaus, that comes when he wades into the Trojan lines to retrieve the corpse of Patroclus, Achilles' lover. Normally heroes did this to strip a body of its armor, but Patroclus had already been looted when Menelaus went in swinging. He just didn't want the Trojans to desecrate his friend's body and stood over it like a lion fighting off hyenas. He even sent a runner back to break the news to Achilles, wanting him to hear it from a friend first. Solid, dependable, considerate. It's Menelaus in a nutshell. With so many good qualities, some doubt if Helen willingly eloped with Paris. Surely a spoiled, thrill-seeking teenage beauty queen forced into an arranged marriage with an older man and then saddled with children would have to be forced to leave that life behind. In the 10 years the Greeks camped outside of Troy, they managed to sneak in several times. Helen could have dropped herself over the walls at any point. And this thought stewed inside of Menelaus, so that when he dropped out of the Trojan horse, he went to reunite with his wife and chop her cheating head off. Helen was waiting for him, though, in the center of Troy, and dropped her clothes faster than a top at Mardi Gras the moment he came into view, causing Menelaus to raise a different sword entirely. He politely excused himself from the looting and pillaging, and then went back to his ship for history's most epic makeup sex. Menelaus spent the rest of his life dealing with trauma from the war, unable to move on from the death he had seen and dealt. Now, back in Sparta and finally ruler of his own kingdom, Menelaus found he was more comfortable around the palace concubine than Helen, and spent most of his days with them and his children by them. Helen was fine with that. The glorious King Menelaus is the perfect choice for the fighter who wants to use diplomacy to expand his empire. Calling on stalwart allies to wade into battle alongside you, sure in the knowledge that your cause is divine in its righteousness. Or at least a good excuse to take an extended vacation with your bros and crack open a lot of brews because this has been a noob's guide to Menelaus. Normally at this point, I try and keep it super casual and say, hey, subscribe if you want to, or maybe even join the Patreon. But here's the thing, this video was written by myself and edited by House Adanion. And even though we've invested dozens of hours into making it, there's no guarantee you'll watch it. So if you're watching these, if you're laughing at them, Subscribe to the channel, keep coming back, tell people about this series, because we love making these videos for you, they're so much fun, and we hope to keep doing it for a long time to come. But regardless of what you do, thanks for watching.